This is Sarah. She recently went out for her birthday with her family, and she had a couple drinks to celebrate, but later she and her husband found out that she was two weeks pregnant. She decided to do the responsible thing and go to the doctor to find out more about how to take care of her baby's health and the impact of alcohol on a baby. The doctor decided to provide her with information on fetal alcohol spectrum disorders. FASDs or fetal alcohol spectrum disorders are a group of conditions that occur in an individual whose mother drank alcohol while she was pregnant. Like any other drug, when alcohol is consumed by a pregnant woman, it can pass from the mother's blood to the baby through the placenta. A baby's body does not have the capacity to break down and digest alcohol, resulting in higher levels of alcohol remaining in the baby's body. This in turn has an effect on the baby's development. Ideally, to prevent a child from getting an FASD, a woman should stop drinking alcohol when trying to get pregnant. This is because she could get pregnant and not know for up to four to six weeks. There is no safe amount of alcohol to drink during pregnancy. Although the more you drink, the higher the risk of your baby developing FASDs, even one drink poses a threat to the baby's health. However, if a woman has been drinking alcohol during pregnancy and she just finds out, she should stop immediately. It is never too late to stop drinking. This is because the baby's brain grows throughout the pregnancy and the sooner a woman stops drinking, the lower the risk of FASDs for the baby. Alcohol-related birth defects are health conditions that are present at birth. These include defects in the heart, kidneys, and bones. Children may also have problems with hearing and suffer from vision loss. It's not necessary that every individual will present all these defects. Some may only have a few. Neurobehavioral disorders associated with prenatal alcohol exposure is a new diagnostic category. A child or youth with this condition will have problems in three main areas. Firstly, they may have neurocognitive impairments, including problems with thinking and memory. Secondly, they may have self-regulation problems, including behavioral issues such as severe tantrums and difficulty paying attention. Thirdly, they may also have adaptive functioning impairment, which means that they have trouble with day-to-day -day tasks such as bathing or dressing for the weather, and they may have trouble playing and socializing with other children. The next diagnosis that Sarah's doctor informs her of is fetal alcohol syndrome. This is a permanent birth defect caused by maternal consumption of alcohol during pregnancy. The first diagnostic criterion for this illness is prenatal growth deficiency, which is growth issues related to the baby during its time in the womb, or postnatal growth deficiency, which are growth issues related to the baby after it has been born, as it does not meet the standards of height, weight, and other factors at its age. The second diagnostic criterion for this illness is specific patterns of facial abnormalities. These manifest in different ways, including irregular skin folds in the corner of the eyes, small head circumference, a lower nasal bridge, accompanied with a short nose, small eyes, mid face, and no groove on the upper lip and a thin upper lip. The third diagnostic criterion for those with FAS is the dysfunction of the central nervous system. Though there is no specific pattern, common issues include microcephaly. This is an issue whereby the child's head is smaller than it should be as per standard sizing. This is the result of irregular brain growth in utero due to alcohol exposure. Another issue includes a thin corpus callosum, which is the neurological structure that connects both hemispheres of the brain. This leads to inadequate neural connections between both hemispheres and a range of behavioral and cognitive outcomes as a consequence. Alcohol-related neurodevelopmental disorders are characterized by two things. Firstly, issues with the central nervous system, including structural and neurological abnormalities. Secondly, there are problems with the behavioral and cognitive abilities of the child involved. The issues that surround the central nervous system include problems that involve the motor skills of the child, structural brain abnormalities, as well as microcephaly, which is a smaller cranial size than usual. The issues that surround the behavioral and cognitive impacts include more difficulties learning than the average child, issues with social perception when the child is in a social environment, and problems with judgment, memory, and attention. Sarah then asks the doctor, what are some signs and symptoms to watch out for for children that may have FASDs? The doctor then mentioned that signs and symptoms for FASDs vary from child to child, and depending on the type of illness, they can range from mild to severe. Some common symptoms include learning disabilities, where children have trouble learning basic skills such as reading, writing, and doing math, 
intellectual disabilities, where children have a delay in developing cognitive skills like problem solving, critical thinking, and decision making. Children that fall under FASDs are also commonly seen exhibiting hyperactive behavior such as the inability to concentrate, they are easily distracted, and may have an aggressive attitude. Finally, the facial abnormalities that the doctor has already discussed with Sarah, where there are specific patterns of facial abnormalities as commonly seen in children with FASDs. With all this in mind, Sarah was curious to know how such children are helped, and was surprised to learn that currently, with regards to treatments and therapy, there is no cure for FASDs. Because no two children with FASDs are exactly alike, current treatment plans involve behavior and educational therapy. Here, a team of child special educational teachers, speech, physical, and occupational therapists, and psychologists work with the child on addressing his or her specific impairments and build up on their strengths and goals. Research has shown that early intervention of this type of treatment can improve a child's development. As of right now, no medication is approved to specifically treat FASDs, but doctors often do prescribe medications that can help and improve the symptoms of FASDs. One of the most commonly prescribed medications is stimulants, which are used to treat symptoms such as hyperactivity, problems staying focused, as well as poor impulse control. The doctor then shared the exciting new treatment option called postnatal supplementation. Children with FASDs lack certain vital nutrients that are crucial for brain functioning, such as omega-3 fatty acids, vitamin D, K, E, and calcium. Through supplying these vitamins postnatally, it can improve child development. The doctor also shared that researchers are currently investigating exercise. Research has shown that when children engage in exercise, there is increased circulation of a protein that helps support brain functioning called the brain-derived neurotrophic factor, suggesting a possible new treatment. With this new information on FASDs, Sarah leaves the clinic much more informed and decides to stay away from alcohol for her own health and that of her babies.